Hey folks, Josh Hager with Bearded Bee Works here again. If you watched our video where we made this uh, sugar syrup mixing drum, uh, we told you we we're going to put it to use. What we're about to do, um, I'm going to mix up um, approximately 25 gallon. Uh, I'm going to do 25, 30 gallon. I'm going to do uh, 20 gallons of water <clears throat> and 170 pounds of sugar, and that should be around a one to one uh, ratio. So. Um, I have a cool little meter that goes on my um, hose to meter my water so I don't have to bucket it in one at a time, but I forgot that at home. So we're going to do it the old school way. Um, I've got a line coming off my hot water heater here uh, for an old washer and dryer hookup. So I'm going to put four buckets of water into my mixer here, which will give me my 20 gallons of water. Um, that weighs roughly 166 pounds or so. 170 pounds, and then we got 170 pounds of sugar. So let's get started. <clears throat> this water is pretty hot, it should melt that sugar pretty easy. Especially just being one to one and having a little mixing action here. All right, I told you in the video I was going to put a door on this thing and mount it to the wall, but you see that I have not got that done yet, so we're going to have to make it work without that. So I'm going to plug my pump up, get the water circulating, make sure I got this shut off and this all the way on. All right, we're pumping water. I'm just going to slowly start adding this sugar in. You can see I'm using Walmart brand sugar. Um, oh. If there's a cheaper option out there, I haven't found it yet. Every once in a while, like your mom and pop grocery stores will have a good sale. But outside of that, uh, Walmart's the consistent place to get sugar.
All right, and I'm just gonna let that mix for a little bit while I gather up my um, feeding containers. I use some one gallon buckets and some quart jars, and some half gallon jars, um, depending on the colony size. So I'm just gonna let that mix while I gather this other stuff up. I also told you I was gonna be making a transfer tank. Uh, so that system will be stationary, which it could be. You could move that if you wanted to. Um, you could do that with an inverter. You could run it off an inverter if you wanted to. Um, but I already had a, have a little 12 volt transfer pump. So I'm going to set this up um, to use with that and drill two holes, uh, one for my um, to put the, the syrup in and one to take it out. Um, you could use the same hole for both, but I'll probably put some, some kind of weight on the bottom of my pickup hose so it doesn't try to float because I'm just using water hose or maybe some type of screen and it may not want to come back through this lid. So I'm going to drill two holes. And these are... Uh, inch and a half holes. I keep my little transfer pump in this tote just to try to keep the mess down, but it, it is a, um, it's a little 12 volt uh, pump, it'll do two, 290 gallons per hour, um, just a little transfer pump. The only drawback to this pump, there's no pressure switch on it, so you want to try not to deadhead this thing. So when I get, um, when I get everything set up. I set all my feeders up, have the caps off and ready to fill up. I put them on top of each hive, or you can do it, you know, at your shop and take the feeders out. But I put everything on each hive, have it ready, and I have just a cheap gas nozzle, which I'll put a longer hose on it for uh, feeding outdoor. This is just to pump it out of a tank when I was using it that way. Um, and um, I would just go through and fill up every... Uh, feeder as fast as I can and try not to deadhead this pump because it's not good on it. So, uh, like I said, it's, tw it's a 12 volt pump and as you'll see later, I just plug this into the uh, um, light plug, the trailer plug on my truck and make sure your headlights are on and that'll run that pump um, no problem. So, it's also got a little inline switch. You can turn the thing off and on. Like I said, you just want to be careful not to deadhead this pump. All right, so I've got uh, my transfer tank in the truck. I haven't strapped it down yet. I got my transfer pump in here that we just looked at. And <laughs> I don't really have a good system for right now, but excuse my mess. I'm pumping this with a water hose all the way from back there because one, I have a mess. And two, I I'll probably go out the back of the uh, shop with it at some point, but that's my only drawback. My hot water source is at the very back of my shop, but. We'll make do this way, but I just wanted to show you that. Um, like I said, I got two holes up there. Got a little 10 pound weight on there to keep that thing from popping out and shooting sugar syrup everywhere. Um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll fill that up and then we'll be able to go out to the bee yard. All right, so if you watch my videos, um, you know that we use feeder shims um, on lighter colonies that don't have the food stores they need for the winter. So before I feed, I have to pull those feeder shims off. That's what I'm gonna do first. You can see they consume most of this sugar. <clears throat> Can't keep my smoker lit today. All my fuel's about half wet. So this ought to be fun. Just gonna kinda shake the bees off there and set this aside. And then I also use these foamy inner covers. They gotta come off too. I just use those for winter. And that one is ready to feed. Same thing here. Get this foamy off here. I like these for winter time, but um, I don't like them for summer because the bees hate them. If I'm getting in and out of bees a lot, 
it really gets the bees aggravated. <laughs> so this is a, com a combination that I'm doing. Um, this was a queenless hive that we found when we did our spring inspection. And I just combined them up with a weaker hive to give them a little boost in bees. There were several bees, not enough to uh, requeen, but there were some bees that we wanted to add back to the workforce. Let's see if they've tried to even com combine yet. So I just want to get this top box off here and the feeder shim underneath it. I just had some paper towels handy, so that's what I used to combine with. I prefer newspaper, but most time when I think of, when I need to combine something, I don't have newspaper with me, but I always keep a roll of paper towels in the truck. So I'm just going to shake these bees out, what's left in here, into this box. Like I said, they basically combined themselves. A few bees in the box, give them a little tap. Put our frames back in. This video is gonna be a little rushed. I've got to be somewhere in just under an hour and got several bees to feed. But I want to do this video while I'm while I'm working. I want to show y'all how I feed. So we got all right. That one's taken care of. All right, finally got my smoker lit. I've already got these bees stirred up and it's hard to settle them down after they're stirred up, but <coughs> it is what it is. All right, so we're gonna hook our, uh, we're gonna hook our pump up. Drop this in down in there. our hose on our outlet side. I've already put my um, my nozzle on the other end. I gotta turn my lights on like I said and plug this up. And we're just gonna go down through here filling these bad boys up. Put about three quarters of a bucket on these big ones, three quarters of a gallon to a gallon somewhere in there, depending on the size of them. I'll just put my plug in there after I fill it just to keep uh, bees from getting back in there. <clears throat> I'm getting good prime. Usually pumps a little bit harder than that, but I am pumping a pretty good distance. Could be my hose. My hose has got a couple of kink spots where, from being new, probably it's not helping. Yeah, that's better. Like I said, we're just gonna run down through here, fill these all up, and then we'll come back and flip them over <clears throat> just to keep from deadheading our pump. See, it puts out a pretty good stream. Doesn't take too long to fill a bucket. Not as good as a 
trash pump or something like that, but it works pretty well. So you see here I've got some gallon feeders, got some half gallons, and then I use some quarts. Um, it took just a few minutes, maybe eight, eight, ten minutes to fill up 18 feeders. So not too bad. A hole the size of, or just big enough for the 70 millimeter uh, mason jar lid to fit in there. Um, Bob Benny's got a good video on that. I'll try to link that in the description. But that's how I uh, that's how I feed. So I can you'll see in a minute when I put a jar on, it'll fit, sit right on top there. So I just pop that out, flip this jar over, or bucket over, and they're fed. Looks like I need a ring for this one. Man, I've got these bees stirred up. A lot less enjoyable when the bees are ticked. Here's a half gallon. Flip that up and it'll sit right on there. So I'm feeding a uh, just a one-to-one -one syrup and the, the goal here is not to add weight of course um, but it's just basically hand to mouth for the bees. I want them to take this feed and feed it straight to brood. It's a brood stimulant or brood uh, rearing stimulant. When the bees sense that um, one to one, that's similar to a nectar, thin syrup coming in, it'll stimulate the bees. Not like a true nectar flow, but it does help. Um, I, will, I don't recommend getting your bees this uh, stirred up. Boy, they are they're hot today. It's uh, getting late in the day, overcast. I uh, couldn't keep my smoker running and I was a little rough with them trying to get them out of those feeding shims. So um, once you get them stirred up, there's really no calming them back down. So the best thing to do is take it slow and easy, use plenty of smoke and um, not get them this way to begin with. But anyway, you're gonna see the good and the bad here. This is one of those days that could be better, but um, not too bad. A couple extra stings and a few ticked off bees, but we got this yard fed. We're gonna go move to another yard. Um, we got a mess to pick up where we pulled these feeder shims off. I'll melt this sugar down and use it on my next uh, batch of sugar syrup. Get these feeder shims cleaned up, put away. Like I said, I need to break these units down. These, um, the bees in these uh, double nukes that I have here over a double screen board um, are ready for a tin frame. So um, I'll be doing that here in the next couple of days. We've got some rain coming. After that rain breaks, I'll, uh, I'll get them um, taken down and, and put where they need to be. Appreciate you watching our videos. Um, hit that like and subscribe button and uh, keep coming back for more. Share our videos with your friends. Help, help our channel to keep growing and we can try to help everybody be the best beekeeper they can be. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.